Hey, I'm Tyler Edlin, and welcome back to Brush Sauce Theater, episode 12. Thank you for viewing. I'm here again with Leon Tucker, and he'll be giving us a paint over demonstration on the 3D model we created in the previous video. Yeah, and, that's right. All right, yeah, so why don't you just t talk about your approach to this? Um, yeah, of course I will. So uh, here I started uh, adding in some, some clouds, really simple. Uh, to start off, and I also laid in a, a photo of some clouds to uh, get some color in first. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now is just noodling in some some first details. You're pick, picking just, out the silhouettes. Yep, that's right. Painting in a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. So and I think that's a good way to work, though. You're you you generally you're going background to foreground, and that's the kind of the way I I learned how to to paint these types of scenes as well. Oh wow, yeah. So yeah, be, because I have this uh, uh, 3D uh, layer, uh, and the com the composition is already laid out, it's it's pretty hard for me to to pick a good uh, point to start from. Yeah. So I just started noodling away and, and seeing what I could do first. Uh, I'm using the lesser tool uh, to get some atmosphere in. So I use this... Uh, the cloud brush, huh? Yeah, cloud brush, yeah. The yeah. famous cloud uh, brush. Yeah, I believe a lot of guys use it, yeah. right? <laughs> and you're setting in the atmospheric perspective to make all the, um, the different planes of the image read, right? Yeah. So I, I did that in 3D. Mm-hmm. So the, the fog was already uh, was already uh, fixed a bit, and I'm just an enhancing that a little bit more. So you see me using the lasso tool. Yeah, yeah to like the way you just did it up there, that totally me uh, made that whole upper left part read as like a roof that overhangs. Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice nice trick you got there. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I use it to to yeah to make the image to make the values uh, a bit more readable. Yeah, like what you just did with the lasso tool down there and the. And the cloud brush, you made it look like there was different like hallways that you know recede down to the side there. That's really nice. Yeah, that, that's right. So the, the three the three D it it was looking okay, but it still had to be be fixed. So that's why I used the the lasso tool to to enhance the the uh, perspective. A bit, yeah, and the they give you the, la the the I think the advantage of using the lasso tool is to it not only mask the area, but it gives you a nice sharp um, sharp edge to work with. Too. Yeah, that's right. So I'm doing the same kind of thing in the background here. Um, the, the background has some huge structures. Yeah, I can tell you've um, done this before. You're you're really good at this. You're just you're picking up the different shapes, and it's looks like it's really easy for you at this point. Well, it's yeah. I'm just having a lot of fun uh, yeah. because all the all the design work and all the thinking, the whole thinking process is already done in 3D. Mm -hmm. The composition is already laid down, so I only have to. Uh, detail it actually so it's just having fun yeah that, just, that, just that's a big away. important <laughs> part of it too because when, when you can get your mind to relax and just kind of go with the flow yeah that's right so for this video I spent about uh, two hours and a bit uh, for this uh, painting over I believe it actually was two hours and 20 minutes yeah about two hours 20 minutes and then yeah. I sped it up about times five so we could um, uh, fit it into an episode here yeah so Okay, what I'm doing here, I uh, I grabbed a picture of some some boats mm -hmm. uh, to use as a base, but I actually ended up uh, dropping that because I didn't like it. Oh, I thought that yeah, I I did notice you you did that, and I, I think these boats don't look bad at all. It, it gives it like there's a whole market right in that little area, like it's yeah. way off in the distance too. The the, the problem um, I had is that the the pictures were a lot more detailed than the than the actual 3D yep. render. So yeah, that can be a uh, problem. It looked a bit weird. Yeah, sometimes what I do to fix that, I, I run a filter through it, like the cutout filter, and that'll yeah, yeah. that'll cut back the detail. Yeah, I I, I could also have used a, a Gaussian blur, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe three or four pixels of Gaussian blur. But the cutout fil filter sounds nice. Yeah, I know. I noticed. Yeah, like when when if someone were to take like this paint over, and you know, like that you do a lot with these is the the three D render gives it. And already like um, a vast amount of detail in that, and of course with the painting, the trick is to kind of like mask out as much of the detail as you can, so you only show what you want. And I noticed that's what you you know you did early on with the atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. So that that's what I also did for the for the speed painting group um, because the 3D has a lot of detail when you when you 
and put a texture on it and mm -hmm. you rendered it out. So what I'm actually doing is I'm delete. I'm almost making the image more uh, or, or maybe less detailed. Actually. Yeah, the, yeah. The less doing less detail, less is more, is what I always say. Yeah, yeah. Just putting in some loose brush marks to to uh, make the image feel a bit more painterly. Like even if you had spent an additional hour going in the closer parts of the scene and painting like cracks and pipes with like yeah. scuffs and rust on them, that would add nothing to the scene as a whole. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's important to leave out what you put in is just as important as what you you know leave out. Yeah, but I I, I also don't want to make it obvious for the viewer that it, it, this is actually a three D image. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make it look as uh, hand painted as possible. Yeah, I think so I think you did a good job with that though. <laughs> Thanks. It definitely has kind of a more organic uh, painterly feel to it than some of the the stiff three D uh, imagery we can find out there. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, trying to to create my own uh, own approach to this. Uh, kind of technique. Yeah, you definitely so, yeah, did. I can definitely recognize a Leon painting now when I see it. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, yeah, I guess I'll continue this, this workflow because I really like it. So, yeah, still noodling in some, some details over there. Yeah, I don't even, I, I was watching this. I was like, I didn't even, you're just totally on autopilot, aren't you? Y yeah. Yeah, I guess I am. It it, it was my birth uh, my birthday. Uh, my uh, my dad ran in with presents and was still oh awesome. Paying. You're like <laughs> I just gotta get this freaking thing done for Tyler so I can enjoy my new gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was nice. So, but uh, yeah, I I just painted. And I know, yeah, I noticed too. Your <laughs> I think it'd be important as well to mention that you you are only it looks like you're painting on pretty much just one layer. Yeah, I did. I, I wanted to um, to make the machine run uh, a little bit faster mm -hmm. I, because I was recording the screen, and it also yeah works. Yeah, it works for me. Um, yeah, I, I to, do to this. I do the on, same thing. As, yeah, to keep it on as few layers as possible. So that's what I usually do, and this time it also was for the for the performance of my computer. Yeah, because it, it is a bit taxing once you start recording things on a machine, I've noticed. Yeah. But I like I like how you got all these little winding corridors now, like within the scene that you're kind of just fleshing out with the with the shapes. Yeah. Like it's just like this is just like one giant market and there's lots of shady things going down in the in the corners. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there were some things that I didn't really like about this image, and that was the 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 big tower. Oh, here I'm uh, figuring out a composition. Mm -hmm. I want I wanted people to look at the the right building first, the building at the right, the big uh, lighted building, mm -hmm. and then uh, to the big tower in the middle. But the image felt a bit uh, almost symmetrical because the tower was sitting in the middle. But I I didn't really mind it. <laughs> Yeah, that's and, quite a giant building back there. It's nice. Yeah, and it all and it also felt like the 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 left part of the image was a bit too dark. Mm -hmm. So um, in a few minutes, I am about to add some some little lights over there to balance the composition out a bit. Yeah, it's all about balance. Yeah. So yeah, you want to you want to uh, give the the audience. A bit of a flow uh, for the eye, uh, a path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically the, the theme I was talking about with some of my the students I mentor this week was about developing a, a flow with with um, using shapes and light to guide the viewer's eye to a scene. Yeah, focal points and uh, secondary focal points and even tertiary focal points. <laughs> I don't know. I I love that little. I love that even though you took it out. I love all those little boats down there. That's quite something. Well. Oh. Yeah, thanks. But yeah, I um, in the end I added some boats, but they were a little bit smaller and a little bit more hand painted. I do, I do, I do like what you end up with. There's just so many possibilities to go. Yeah, I I had to to think about the about those things on the fly because I was recording. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have the time to sit down and think about the about the design of the of the boats. So I just did them. Hey, they're, they're, they're sloppy little shacks that, that sell the produce and all the other fun, shady things down there. Yeah. <laughs> the illegal firearms and the... 
Yeah, something like that. It's kind of a a poor a poor region. I I really like to to paint uh, favelas or poor yeah. poor cities. stacks of shacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah I don't know why they they always feel uh, they always were comfort. Uh, how do I say that? I don't know. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Easier, easier to paint than than other uh, than other super clean, like futuristic type of stuff yeah. where everything's yeah. shiny, yeah. reflective, and really crisp. Yeah, yeah I really like some 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 of the gritty sci-fi uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, like this. I I'm also having a lot of trouble with uh, high fantasy concepts mm -hmm. because things are so clean, and I really like to paint dirty stuff. But you can do dirty I, fantasy, I still dirty sci-fi. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that that was one, on a side note, that was one of the first big successes what George Lucas had with the original Star Wars. It was like the first time that, you know, someone did sci-fi and made everything kind of look lived in and a bit gritty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Rolf McQuarrie did, a, did an yep. insane job in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is the part where I deleted the, yeah. the ships. Now you got like a whole pier down there. That's just as cool. Yeah, yeah. I tried to paint some kind of uh, harbor in. And that's that's what's great about I get the feeling when I look at an image like this. I, I just when I start focusing on even just little parts of it, when you like when you zoom in, I can start creating stories on my own and just imagining different things that would be going on in in a place like this. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to to make the place feel like uh, it is being lived in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so definitely. You definitely were successful in in that respect. So let's see what I'm. What am I doing now? Oh yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, adding a photo or at least a tiny bit of a photo to lay some texture in. Oh what? Oh yeah, in the foreground. That worked well. Yeah. You up the you up the you up the contrast on it first, and then you can just lower the opacity right on the parts you don't need. Yeah, that's right. I I use the the lighten uh, uh, adjustment uh, layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, like that's what's great that we should just mention for people in general is that using like a lighten, I think, layer. It is it, if you paint most of the um the forms or suggest them in the shadows. When you add something on like a lighten layer, it, it can show just some of the the highlighted detail you want. And yeah, then, that, I do that all the time. The same layer mode. Yeah, yeah, the lighten really works. Uh... Works out great. I learned that in the in, in the CGMA uh, classes actually. Oh, awesome. So what I did, uh, what I'm doing now is um, adding some kind of uh, uh, little roofs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you call it. Uh, how you call them in English? Yeah, little roofs. Uh, yeah, little roofs for uh, to indicate some kind of market uh, market environment. And here I'm adding in a little bit of floor. I actually a little floor that. texture. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So in case anybody was wondering, how about how many years have you spent doing digital art to kind of get to this level? Um, I guess about two to two and a half years. That's a, that's amazing, man. That really is. Well, well, thanks a lot. But the, I I um, um, I did this kind of thing intensively since last year, maybe. So mm -hmm. I've been I've been having this dream of becoming a concept artist for about a year now. So oh, wow, you're you're making quick progress. Yeah, thanks. That's uh, really I, amazing. I did I did some of the the, the online courses and they uh, they really helped me. Oh, and that's also wonderful. looking looking around uh, around you and looking at other guys' uh, paintings also really helps. Yeah, they make but it really it, easy to learn this type of thing these days, huh? Yeah, I, with, I just guess with so. the resources available to you anyway. Yeah, Not that it's easy so to learn, but yeah, I, I actually started working in three D uh, a few years ago when I uh, yeah when I when I started learning about this uh, kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and then someone said, well, maybe you should buy a graphics tablet. And then I did, and I didn't use it for a year. I was literally too scared to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just told myself, well, okay, now I just do it. And the first painting turned out to be really crappy. <laughs> yeah, they all do. And, uh, and a hundred paintings after that, they were still crappy. And uh, yeah, it just went on like that. And so now you're a pro. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's two pro, years I, later. I learned, 
<laughs> I don't know. Dude, two, uh, two years, I still think I was just doing photo mashups and, like, collages and stuff with Photoshop. Because it's like, whoa, I can merge two pictures together. I don't even, th I don't even think I was painting in it until, like, my, my third year after having it when I didn't even know they had a tablet at the time. And I was like, wow, I can, this is going to take some practice. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Ah, to see, I, I've been digitally painting now for about eight to nine years. Okay, wow. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, just on a side note, I love your stuff, man. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's been a lot of work. I definitely did not progress as quickly as you have. Well, just imagine, I'll like, wait, I, give yourself another seven years. You, you'll be doing some really. You won't even. You can't even imagine other things you'll be banging out. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's. I'm just really scared of the future. <laughs> I don't know what will happen. I'm sure. So, you're uh, oh, sorry. You just you're still adding different uh, shapes into the silhouette. It looks like with the, your smokestacks and other. Uh, you're adding yeah, lights and right. signage now. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, to say. I, I added some lights in the, in the left part of the painting, just like I said, to, to balance it out a bit. And uh, I, I added some little ships there in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, in the bottom half of the painting, uh, to replace uh, those ships that I did delete. Uh, yeah, that, that still looks great, what you added, I think. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I wanted it to look a little bit more painterly, so I just painted the ships in instead of using a, a photo. Yeah, your your painting style definitely has some you know character to it, which I love. That might be my favorite thing. Wow, <laughs> cool. Because you, know, you, you if you see some people, and this is just my opinion, if they just do straight photo mashups and or you know straight three D and do kind of like half ass paint overs, it, it all kind of just looks generic and and the sameish. But your your yeah, I, I, yours definitely looks hand painted and that it, you know it's got some personality to it. That's. That's great to hear. Yeah, that's. I mean, the industry has some standards, uh, mm -hmm. which has a lot to do with using photos and and photo meshing and stuff. And uh, most of the things look the same, in my opinion. So I try to uh, come up with with something unique. Uh, but it's yeah, it's still still a process. So uh, I'm using this technique for about uh, one month, one month and a half, maybe. Yeah, you've done like 30 paintings I've seen in your groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Don't be nice. away. Like, God, I haven't posted anything in two weeks, and this guy's posting something like every other day at least. Yeah, but the, the, that's the big, advantage, uh, the big advantage of not doing client work. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm still in school, so I, I'm having some spare time to do this. So you, you see me add a photo filter, and I ended up uh, um, erasing most of, uh, most of it out. She copied and pasted a bit of it to imply some of the detail in the background. Yeah, in the I background, yeah. I think that's what a scene like this is all about, is the implied detail. Like, it, it tricks the eye to think, oh, there's something back there, even though you really didn't spend anything more than 30 seconds suggesting it. That's right. And instead of using photo textures, you can also use things that you've already painted out to, to imply mm -hmm. some detail. So that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, an image like this is perfect for that type of technique. So still adding in some some yeah, yeah, minor could, details. You just look. You could paint like another like ten images just within this city, like recomposing scenes and fleshing it. This is just cr there's so much going on here. I said yeah, that before, yeah. but I mean, it is really just a really cool place. Yeah, I initially thought that the the image was a bit too big for me, um, but yeah, it ended up looking okay. I guess. Yeah, you handled it well. So, but it was a it was a new thing for me. Normally, my scenes are not um, this complicated. Oh, so you you see me, uh, um, yeah, attempting to do some some characters. Dude, my characters look pretty much just like that. They're terrible when I make them that big in a scene. I just I because that I don't know. I get burnt out around this time, and I was like, all right, I gotta put some figures in, and then I. I'm guilty of kind of like half-assing them myself when I should spend just a bit more time. Yeah, but the, the problem is I can't do better than this <laughs> when we're talking about characters. My characters are really weak, so I'll have to practice that a lot more. Yeah, They're, they're serving their purpose here anyway. It's given us a sense of scale. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's why I added them to, to imply some, uh, yeah, 
to use it as a skill. Then you remember to paint the shadow in from where you know behind the light. So that's also just kind of sells the believability as far as that's concerned. So. Yeah, I I decided to to light that foreground up a bit to uh, give some sort of rhythm to the image. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't know if the light would actually hit that uh, that spot. But no, yeah, but you, you're using you know it's the whole cinematic lighting thing where if it, you know you can you can fudge it a bit if you if it makes the image uh, work better as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe I did that. <laughs> and for the most part, it's still remaining consistent from what you have with the rest of the scene, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I'm adding some more. Highlights, giving the image. A yeah, bit. I mean, it's just it, it. looks like you got you know hundred thirty you know level structures in yeah. the back. They're just like tons of buildings and offices and. Yeah, I, I had some problems with uh, with the scale. Maybe the ships in the foreground are a bit too small, but well. Yeah, it just makes them look like they're really far back there, like. Huge difference. Yeah, maybe they're a yeah. tiny bit too small in retrospect, but you know, for the most part, it it yeah. works. So what I did here is um, I copied and then I mirrored the 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 image to mm -hmm. um, uh, make it look like the water had some uh, reflections. Yeah, that that's a great trick. Yeah, it's really yeah, it's really cheap, but it works. Yeah, well, why why go in and hand paint all of that and try to make it accurate when you can just do that trick? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why Photoshop is such an amazing program. Mm -hmm. and so then you're... adding adding some water ripples. Yeah, you thought of everything. I I tried to think about like what, it. Like I when I was watching this, I was just like, wow, I don't even know where he's gonna go with it next. And then like you added the, the lights, and then you added oh. some wires, and then you added some signs. Like what? You, you mean a scene like this is just really up to you know you limit. You're only limited by your imagination and whatever you can think of. I'm sure I forgot tons of things. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Then again, if you went, even though this was like, you know, you a speed painting, you spent like a few hours on it. If you went back, did some referencing, you could really push some of the ideas in this way further if you wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, maybe think of, find different. the things you didn't think of. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. What could we have added to this picture? <gasps> I see. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to look at like a lot of industrial images, and then we, you know, you get some. Maybe some like support, <laughs> massive iron like rivets or support beams uh, underneath yeah. the plate. I mean, there. Yeah. Who knows? You can only tell by looking at some photos and getting ideas. Yeah, and and maybe uh, maybe I did have to come up with a with a story to support this image. To to. I always yeah. I always love come, trying to come up with a story for an image. Yeah, maybe maybe a, a character and what what is he doing? What is his purpose? Uh, what are they doing in the city? Maybe this huge tower in the back uh, hasn't been finished yet, like the like the uh, the story in the Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Bible. So, well, <laughs> this is oh, yeah. almost wrapping up here. Uh, I think so. Um, I guess we have three minutes left. Still adding some some minor minor details. Yeah. Could add little Emma's flags um, throughout the 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 city if it's got under um dictatorship of some empire or something oh, like yeah. that too. Certain oh, sigils or idea. emblems. Yeah, that's a good idea. The the city doesn't really have a leader at the moment, or it's it's not not it's not looking like it's being uh, ruled by some kind of guy. Well, maybe it's a free city, <laughs> a free trade city. Yeah, I think it is. And I like how you added that that kind of the gradient there for the extra layer of atmosphere in the in the corner like that. That looked great. Yeah, I, I try to to uh, uh, make the images of a uh, uh, make the sections hit by light a bit more orange, mm -hmm. and the sections in the shadow a bit more blue. Blue and green. Yep, and then yeah, orange and, and yellow. It's a good yeah. good color scheme. Yeah, it, it's, it always works for me. It's like all those movie posters, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, uh, contrasting really using colors. The, the orange blue uh, contrast. Well, I wanted to take a second again to thank you again for coming on here and showing us this demo of how, you know, your workflow and how, and how you paint such vast epic scenes so quickly. Yeah, no problem. Uh, like I said before, I, I'm having a lot of fun, really. 
I mean, this, you did such a great job with this. Um, I I got to get as fast as you. You're, you mean, you've been doing this for two years, and I, I I without the knowledge of Cinema 4D or whatever, I could definitely not hand paint a scene like this as quickly. So well, me I learned I so. learned something. <laughs> I learned something in the process as, as well, and I hope some others did. Yeah, I I hope so too. Um, I hope you're having a, as much fun as yeah, I'm definitely. having. Definitely, I'm, I'm because... going to be getting some Cinema 4D and practicing this. Until then, I'll keep bugging you to give me some leftover 3D parts so I can try to paint over myself. <laughs> <laughs> I will, no problem. Your 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 recycled bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have a really big library of them, so you can use whatever you want. And again, I yeah, I want to remind everyone I'm gonna include the 3D model base of this in the description so they can uh, download it and give it their own paint over job if they want and see what they come up with. It'll be awesome to see if anyone posts some results. Yeah. And shares That's it. That's nice. So still uh, cropping the image and doing some final changes mm -hmm. before uh, yeah before finishing this thing. All right. I guess it's I guess it's almost done. It's about done. So um, thanks again, man. Well, hopefully I get you back on here again sometime, and I wish you the best. Thanks. Yeah, you too, Tyler. Th thanks for this opportunity. <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody, and subscribing. Take care. Hey, everyone. Uh, this week's question comes from Charles, and it popped up almost uh, immediately after posting the first video. And his concern was, you know, shouldn't people starting to make art start uh, making their own perspective just to be sure they learn the right things before creating 3D models and using perspective shortcuts with tools? And yeah, he's absolutely right. Um, if you're a digital artist and you're more so on the painting side of things and happen to know 3D, this is just a way to kind of um, mingle the workflows and, you know, even if you don't 3D, you, you, you could be like me and just primarily focus on the 2D. You, you once in a while might want to hire a guy that knows 3D to, to build a, a model for you or if you work in studio, you might be provided with a model often from clients to paint over. So um, it's good just to, an another way of working, maybe possibly even speeding up the way um, uh, you can make a, a certain type of picture, but using that as a crutch will not help you in the long run and will not develop any, you know, fundamental skills by painting this way. It's just, you know, another fun way to, to work and, you know, explore and experiment with paint. So, uh, thank you for watching.